Hello and welcome back to another out of spec reviews video and welcome to a video that I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I rented this Tesla Model Y long range dual motor from Hertz. It has 12,000 miles on it. It's a 2022 car. Actually, it was built in, let's take a look, six of 2022. So, you know, it's almost a year old now. So let's just say just, a, yeah, about a year, 10 months of rental abuse. The paint on this is absolutely foobar. It's crazy. It is so scratched. I've never seen more swirls in a car in my entire life. And so that kind of just paints a picture for how this car has been treated and cared for over its last, you know, 10 months of life, its first 10 months. What I'm really curious about is what is the battery degradation? Some of you may remember I did a video with my Tesla Model 3 recently where I ran the battery health test and it actually failed on that car and gave me a really weird reading that the car only had like seven or 8% health. I called Tesla about it, they said it was a bug. Now they said it, that bug should be fixed and I'm gonna run a battery health test on this Model Y rented from Hertz. So I wanna talk a little bit about that experience. I have more videos coming with this car where I'm gonna walk you through the testing procedures, show you how you can do this to your Tesla and um, then I can't wait to see the results at the end. It's gonna take probably 20 hours for this test to run because we have a relatively slow charger here. So let's see what happens. I don't know what to expect. <laughs> Battery health tests are really interesting, especially as we get into older EVs as they age. There's really no great way to know battery capacity. Now, we do some capacity testing on our channel when we look at degradation testing, and pretty much I do those with my personal vehicles. For example, the first thing I do whenever I buy a brand new electric car is I charge it to full and I run a range test. I run a constant speed, try and keep it as low as possible all the way till pretty much the car doesn't move anymore. And then I look at how many kilowatt hours I pulled out of it during that session. That's my baseline. Really hard on a battery pack to do that, but that's my baseline. I, of course, buy cars to test them and experience them with you. And then every year, two years, three years, however much it is, we can go back and run that same test and see how much energy, energy we're able to pull out of it then. Most degradation, at least with NCM, which this battery chemistry is, most degradation happens within the first year. And you'll see pretty much on any Tesla degradation profile, a big drop in year one, and then it levels off. And it seems to just keep leveling off. For example, on my Model 3 Performance, we calculated after about two years, two and a half years and 100,000 miles, only about 10% degradation, somewhere around there, which doesn't seem that bad considering that car had track use, way more than 50% of its charging was supercharging and it was just run hard, run hot, and uh, I was really impressed with its performance. So then the big question comes, of course, Hertz, Enterprise, all these others bought a bunch of Teslas to rent out and I just was a customer. I just went on the Hertz app, Hertz Gold said, I want a Model Y, lock in that car, picked it up down the road from here in Fort Collins in Loveland, and um, they're, they're great, I have it for the weekend. It was a hundred bucks a day. I bought all the insurance and everything. So I think for like four days, it was like $550, something like that. And uh, not cheap, but like when you go somewhere, if you fly into a city, having a rental that's a Tesla is great. A, it's great for people who don't own Teslas to experience electric, see the supercharger network. It's kind of a fun thing to, to play around with. And it's a very high quality experience, good power, good range for only a hundred bucks a day. Now I've seen them as low as like $65 a day, depending on where you rent them. That could be a pretty good deal. So um, yeah, I was just really impressed with Hertz's offering. My dad's rented them before, friends of mine have rented them before. I never experienced it, so I wanted to see what it was like. Um, so let's get into the actual health test. Now this is again a 2022 long range all wheel drive. If you were to spec this same car today, it'd be about 56,000 and a bit because it's got the bigger wheels, it's got the black paint, and those are the only options it has. Does not have enhanced autopilot or FSD, of course. It doesn't have the trailer hitch. And it's just a five seat configuration, not a seven seat. So a pretty standard Model Y, all wheel drive. I don't think you'd need anything more. Battery pack capacity on these, I've always been a little bit confused about. Maybe some of you can comment as well. When I first bought my Model 3, it had about 74 kilowatt hours of usable 
battery capacity. Then they upgraded the pack to, I think, 82 kilowatt hour gross and 77 usable, 78 usable, somewhere around there. I don't know. We're going to take a look to see what happens here, and maybe we can see how much energy is added to the battery pack. It's not a great way to look at, at how much energy density or how much energy capacity is in the battery pack, but it could be interesting. So we've done this with the Model 3. It didn't work. Let's try it with the Model Y. Fingers crossed it does work. Um, what I'm going to do is walk you through how to get into this mode, show you some really cool things that are in the service menu that my Model 3 doesn't have. Because this has the heat pump, you get all the coolant lines and everything. It shows you all the crazy stuff. Then we're going to set the vehicle up for the test and let it run overnight and we'll come check on it tomorrow. So let's jump inside, get it all set up and run the test. You join me in the Model Y now, and um, you can see everything's pretty good. I've already supercharged this car today. I've done a lot of driving with it. So the battery's at a pretty good place, and I'll show you how I know all that. I'm gonna click the car in the bottom left and go over here to the software tab. You can see 12,813 miles. I certainly haven't been easy on the car. A lot of fast charging, a lot of battery cycling just in my couple days of having it, but that's what we do when we test a car. I'm gonna press and hold on that long range dual motor. You can do that on the model des designation on any Tesla, and I'm gonna type in service. Now, if you own one, it's cool to go around in here, um, and it says, do you wanna enter service mode? It's like, don't do this on public roads unless there's a maintenance requirement. I think it limits you to seven miles an hour or something like that. And here we go, now we're in service mode. So 20,000 kilometers, 12,800 miles. Um, you can see everything about the car here. What's kind of cool is this one's a, a camera only vehicle. So if I go over here to sensors, you won't see the radar up front. I mean, it's relatively fresh, but not like a brand new vehicle, which makes this battery test even more interesting because we're not sure how this vehicle was used. When I picked it up from Hertz, the dude at the counter was like, oh, I full charged it for you. And of course it was just sitting at a hundred percent. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> and he was like, oh, I had no idea. Like I'll make sure it's at 90% and now he'll be a viewer. So thanks for watching this video. But um, I was trying to explain to him, it's cool to do that on the Model 3 rear wheel drives they have because they have LFPs, but not so cool to do them on any of the Model Ys. Um, and he's like, oh, so that's what the little ticks are for. So it still shows you that even though people are working with these cars often, there's a long way to go to understand how to properly use them and communicate things. For example, just even returning this car to Hertz, I was like, so what percent do you want it back at? He's like, it should be full. I'm like, well, we just talked this not good for you. He's like, yeah, I know. So he's like, well, just bring it back and I'll charge it up for you and won't charge you. But it's also like 80% or 70% in the contract somewhere. That's actually a bit annoying to return an EV at high state of charge. Just let the customer drop it off dead and put enough chargers in there where you can juice the thing up because the last thing I wanna do if I'm late for a flight is charge at a charging station that might have a line in LA on my way to return a rental car. That does not set a good experience. Um, the rental company should take on the charging portion. Okay, so cool stuff. I'm gonna click this little snowflake right here. This is freaking awesome. Look at this. This is the full coolant loop of the octo valve and everything. And I can actually show you the position in the octo valve. First of all, battery pack temperature down here looking great. 34C, 41C, min and max. And these are pretty good values. Um, a, a relatively big spread, bigger spread than I was expecting, especially when I was DC charging earlier. I got the battery pack up to 63, 64 degrees Celsius. That's red hot. I don't think I've ever seen a battery pack get that hot while charging. And this thing just loved to sit there. And then as soon as I unplugged, it ripped the cooling. And that's just Tesla thermal management is just beyond crazy. And Tesla's always just pushing the limits. And they seem to have great degradation performance. Let's see if this car is an exception. There's other things we can do here. So if I come over here, you can see this is basically the uh, HVAC case. So you can see where all the powers or where all the, the vents are coming from. If we change some HVAC requests, you'll see these uh, vents start to move, which is cool. Um, let's see, what else can we do? Yeah, we can do like test HVAC performance and test thermal performance, like lots of cool stuff here. You can look at uh, your 12 volt systems, which is neat. But what we're really looking at here is the high voltage system. You can see we're at 4.7% state of charge, even though it says 5% user indicated. This is one, this one I really love. This is the charging screen. So this tells you everything you need to know when you're supercharging or CCS charging. I have uh, CCS charged this vehicle. It is uh, in, enabled for CCS adapter use. It did not come with one, but I did do that. But what we're gonna do here is go to high voltage system and run the battery health test. So let's click in on this. 
and we have to unlock the gateway. And the way that you unlock the gateway is pretty cool. I'm gonna follow the instructions right here. And it says, ensure the key is authenticated with the vehicle, which do you know where the key is for the vehicle? Thank you, camera operator. I now have the key for the vehicle. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is hold the right turn signal in the active position and press down on the brake pedal for eight seconds. And I need to tap the key. Check this out. Now we get the countdown. I feel like we're breaking into the car. Nothing we're doing here is harmful to the vehicle. It's, it's not something I would do every day because it does a deep cycle of the battery, but it's really cool to see how well these things will hold up. Now I'm gonna click through and go to the health tests. And it says before running this routine, the state of charge must be below 50%. It is, we are at five. I actually recommend going fairly low here because the vehicle has to burn off the excess energy as heat in order to drain it all the way out. So if you want the test done quicker, if you want less stress on your vehicle, definitely make sure that you are as low as you feel comfortable going. And it says, again, the test may take up to 24 hours. And that's because if you leave it at 50%, it would take forever for it to uh, drain. It also must be plugged into an AC charging station capable of supplying at least six kilowatts. Now I believe this can do 6.6 .6 kilowatts. It's 30 amp at 208 volt, but with some sag, it might be down to like 6.2. So we're just gonna be on the bottom end of that, but it still should work. Now, uh, and before I hit run, I actually do need to plug in the vehicle and then we're able to start the test. So let me get this connected up to the charge port. We're just gonna open the charge port right there. I'll get it connected and then we will start everything up. The old Schneider electric charger. This thing has been through some insane temperature <laughs> swings and the cables are still great. The charger's still rocking somehow. Just sort of an ancient relic, if you will. Amazing how well this uh, Schneider electric charger is held up here at the office. So now it says, of course, 13 hours, 45 minutes to full. It's, uh, 30 amps at 208 volts, which, uh, you know, will sag down as we start pulling some current, like I was saying. So we need to make sure we can get at least six kilowatts here. Four <laughs> kilowatts. Come on, onboard charger. Five, six. Good stuff. So now I'm going to hit run on the test. And it says everything, all requirements have been met. Test in progress. And uh, there we go. So it's basically just going to do its thing. We're going to leave the car. It should actually stop charging would be my understanding of how this works. So climb it off. I just want to turn my heated seat off. There we go. Climb it off. Climb it off now. It says test in progress, but it's still charging. I'm not exactly sure. Routine pass stopped. I'm going to go through here and rerun the test. Testing in progress. Very weird that it's still pulling from the charger, but anyway, we'll give it some time. Well, you joined me just a few minutes later. I didn't, couldn't really understand why it was continuing to charge. So I actually just reset that entire setup procedure. And um, as expected now, it stopped charging even though we're connected. And it says uh, test in progress. And I can hear the heat pump running and some other things running to burn off the extra electricity. So now all we have to do is lock up the vehicle leave it here and come back in tomorrow evening, something like that. And it should give us a pretty good readout uh, in percentage as to what state of health the battery is in. I don't know what to expect. And this is a really interesting test, especially if you're thinking about buying a used EV with high mileage. You know, if you do this test, it can really alter the value of the car. If you have one that has for some weird anomaly, 30 or 40% uh, degradation, obviously you want to stay away from that car. If it only has six to 10%, like that might be a pretty good one. Um, these types of topics and measurement techniques need to become more commonplace in the market because unlike a combustion car that, you know, like you can just look at the miles and like you hope they didn't drive it hard when the engine was cold, uh, electric cars definitely, you know, like if it, someone full charges it and full drains it every day versus someone who charges it to 50% and drains it to 40%, you could have two wildly different cars with the same mileage because time and age also affect the vehicle uh, and performance. And you can see we just dropped 0.1%. It's just burning off uh, some energy right here before it starts at charging to full. So let's, uh, we're going to the racetrack tomorrow. So let's go to the racetrack and then we'll come back after and check the state of health on the Hertz 
Model Y. Well, now you join me a couple days later and the testing procedure worked. It went over great and it gave us a score. But before I told you that score in that real time, I actually wanted to wait till I ran the range test on this vehicle. And that's the traditional way of looking at battery degradation. You know, the full charge, drive it to dead and then see how many kilowatt hours you can pull from it. So I first wanna tell you what my calculations are based off of that. Um, I asked, and some new Model Y owners were in the chat who have 2023 Model Ys. They're saying their usable capacity in a brand new Y is somewhere around 79 and a half kilowatt hours usable, 79,500 watt hours. And uh, that's based off of some BMS data, but that seems pretty reasonable. I don't think you'd get 80 kilowatt hours out of it because of course it's 82, 84 gross, and then you know, let's say 79 and a half usable is what we're thinking. Um, I was able to pull 76 kilowatt hours during the range test. Now keep in mind that's from 100% to where the car basically stopped moving. It was dead. And I thought that was really good. And uh, I'll, uh, the video is coming soon, the range test video is coming soon. And so you'll see how far that, that this goes on a charge. So that would indicate about a five, four or 5% degradation in 13,000 miles and 10 months of rental abuse, 12 and a half thousand miles. I guess I have put a few hundred on since we did the test. Let me show you what the battery health display is showing because the big question is, is battery health indicating the degradation or is it degradation with resistance or other portions is it factoring? I'm not sure. So let's jump inside here and take a look at the results. By the way, the test ran, it took like 20 hours. It's a really slow charger, drained all the way, full charged. And then when we picked up the Model Y, it was done, complete, and we got a good result. So jump in and I'll, uh, let's take a look at the numbers here. So looking at the screen, you'll probably already be able to see battery health 93% right here. That was measured two days ago is when we finished that thing. So. What I guess I'm a little bit trying to understand is, does it have 7% degradation or does it have five, four to 5% degradation? And based off of what I was able to pull out of this on a single charge, I actually think it has closer to 4% of degradation. I think this car is holding up really well considering the cycling that it's going through. And I certainly cycled the hell out of this battery pack while I was testing it, just like every EV, but man, I was not easy on the battery pack on this and it's just Tesla's take it in their stride. So um, battery health shows 93% and I'm pretty sure that has a little bit to do with more things than just degradation. That's my guess. Let me know what you think in the comments. And um, I'd say it's holding up this number would suggest it has more degradation. If, if it has 7% degradation, that's more than I would expect in, in 10 months. You have to imagine battery degradation is a factor of time and usage. And like I mentioned, you'll see most degradation happen within the first year. And then, you know, it should kind of trail off after that. For example, our Model 3 performance right over here, this is actually where we shot the what happens when you plug your frozen Tesla into a supercharger video. <laughs> that did really well, by the way. It did very well. Um, that car is about 11% degradation last we checked and maybe 12 or 13 now. Um, I would be surprised if this truly has 7% in, in that low mileage and time. But again, the first year, usually I would guess you would see a two to 3% degradation in year one makes the most sense and then it will kind of level out for under typical usage. But um, there you go. I, I gotta say, I think, uh, I think our range test is still the proper way to measure degradation. I think it's still better to just go from 100% to zero and see what you can pull out of it because I was able to pull 76 and a bit kilowatt hours out of it. So really looking like uh, this thing's holding up great. Anyway, it's time for us to return this car. More videos to come on it though. And I uh, can't thank you enough for watching. Just a quick little battery health check of the Hertz. By the way, Hertz doesn't limit anything. They let you full charge it. They let you full drain it. They let you go top speed. Uh, this car is a fully unlocked and non hindered model wide long range. I love that. Some people were saying like, but Hertz locks some of the battery out. Nope. I pulled every last drop of juice out of this thing and it did not complain, didn't care, drove just like a normal customer owned model Y. So I'm glad they're letting people experience it. And um, I'll have more videos coming on the Hertz experience soon. So thanks for watching. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye.